will flow through to the just as the credit on the sure. electrical yeah. installation. Yeah. So the MPL will flow through. To well, the basically, region. you've got the income there. So you've got the um, AMPR income, which is part of the reserves, which is not on the sheet, of course. The AMPR is part of the reserves that we have. We set aside because we have a grant, five thousand pounds, but we've got to show it as an expenditure item. So the, the reserves that we had in were from last year, because of course we had the, the actual credit last year, not this year. So it doesn't show up as income for this year. Oh, okay, okay. Because it came in, I think it was in January 2023. Yes. Okay. And that's also different with grants. You get them in one year and you pay them out the next. Okay. So you can, so you get an inflated income one year okay. and an inflated outgoing the following year. Okay. And the orders don't like that. They, they ask for explanations about these things because they get a bit concerned about odd things happening. Um, okay. yeah. But the, the bottom line really is that you know we're not a million miles from where we first started, uh, 58,000, if you deduct the energy uh, piece of it. Um, and, and as you know, the green figures are those figures that we've moved into our reserves. So in other words, they're not expenditure, they're transfers. So they're still part of the council's finance. So I had to find some way of showing them on the sheet, so I put them in green, just to add to the reds and the blues and all the other colours, <laughs> just to make it interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions anyone's got on that? No? Okay. Excellent. You okay with Andy? I know you just come in. Uh, yeah, just catch up. My apologies. <laughs> I've just spent... Bit, bit two and a half hours sitting outside uh, um, Stratford Services. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So that's the basic budget. So uh, I'll, I'll produce it each month now. So we go through from April. We'll start again and have a new budget figure there, and then I'll update it each month on, on where we are as we go through month by month. And then if you've got any queries, hopefully we can sort them out to go through. Uh, rather than just sort of chucking them in November at the end, yeah. which is a bit uh, not always the right thing to do. Okay, uh, so that budget, um, we've got some documents to approve as well. At this time of the year, um, we have to approve um, a couple of things. Uh, internal control statement. And this is all a bit sort of yawny stuff, I'm afraid. But internal control statement for each year, it just addresses all the things that we have to do as a council to make sure that we are happy with everything that we do financially. So effective auditing, and we do internal auditing through the audit group. Um, we've got good controls, which we're told by our internal audit we do have, um, fortunately. Um, all our payments are covered. Um, we're working within our budgets all that kind of thing, that's what that document says. And then obviously Bob and myself need to sign that, if you're happy with it. Okay. Well, this was circulated. Are there any comments or questions that any members have got? There was only one potential amendment I was looking to make, which was, it's, it is. So basically, we always used to do our budget setting in the January meeting. Recently, we've been tending to do it in our December meeting yes. because it gives us more time to get the precept sorted. <laughs> but on item three, yep. third line down, it still says January meeting. January. So if we can change that to December. I think that would that would fit in with our what now become our common practice. Questions from members, in which case is the proposal that we readopt the, the new uh, statement of internal control. Yes. Jane, thank you. Seconded. Yeah, all those in favour, please show. Actually, no. yeah. okay. The other one uh, is the risk management scheme. Uh, we are required by our insurers to do a risk management exercise annually, check that everything we do um, has a sort of risk assessment attached to it. Um, it is self-explanatory. Ours is not particularly complicated compared with some councils. Um, 
relatively straightforward. Um, I mean, just taking one for example, the council has adopted financial regulations to prevent irregularities, which we have done, which we do every year. Um, we, and I've got their review regulations annually, 2023 adopted. Um, petty cash we don't have any of. Um, payment authorisation is done by two members of this parish council. Um, I set it up, you authorise it. Um, PAYE is dealt with through an organisation called PATER. Um, so they are making sure that we do all of our statutory requirements as far as payroll is concerned. So they're just examples, but I'm sure you've read it in full detail over the last few days. Again, comments or questions? There's an oddity on the lost to exception to some of the between audit and audit group, so I think it should be by audit group. So that would be, so it's the bottom one of the risk, which will then read quarterly checks by councillors for security by audit group. That's it, that's fine. Okay. With that amendment, is there a proposal that we have that as the new or the updated risk management scheme? Jane, thank you, Colin. All those in favour, please share. Yeah. I realise this is all pretty uh, mundane stuff, but it's just something we have to do yeah. to comply fully with um, our auditors, really. And in um, the contractors list and statutory payments yeah, list. The contractors list. Find it. Again, we update this every year, and there are a number of contractors. Obviously, we've got our main one, which is the village contract with uh, Jason Mayer. We've got GB Sports. We've got the Somerset Council. Um, the, the Somerset Council one is a difficult one this year because we don't know what to toilet cleaning contract is going to uh, be necessary as we move forward. Um, because we, for, a, for a whole period of time, we won't need it. And then once we got into the new toilet facility, I, I was going to suggest to the council we look at some quotes for getting other contractors to, to, to see whether they're more protected. Or, so that's a difficult one, the, uh, the toilet cleaning contract, really. Um, utilities are fairly straightforward. Crystal Water and Eon Energy. There's a question mark against both of those because we don't really know what they're going to be, uh, either of them. Um, and then you've got a number of membership ICO, CPRE, Community Council, SELC, SLCC, the Playing Fields Association um, are all regular payments that come in during the year uh, and which we subscribe to. The JP Mayo part of the document. That's got the new figures on it that we agreed back in November of last year. So that takes into account the changes we're having to the grass cutting regime and the front car park area and also Jason's, one or two things come off it as well which we agreed um, and it also includes South Brent close flailing uh, job as well which we've done twice a year. So. Um, that's the new figure for Jason, um, and he will be sending us an invoice for that now at the beginning of the year, and it will be broken down into 12 equal payments. So that's the contractor. Do you want to put on the back of is that part of it as well? Um, no, the, the, the actual, um, the second part of it is, is the confidential part, which is to right. do with staffing. Okay. So that we don't get into it, there's no changes anyway. But we don't get in, involved in a, in a meeting of this type with that. Um, no, no, any questions that you've got for Owen on, on those? If not, can I have to propose that we accept those as the statutory payments for the forthcoming year? Malcolm, David seconded. All those in favour? Okay. You don't need a signature on that. You don't need a signature on that one. Excellent. Um, <coughs> and I think come to the end of that particular part of the process? Yep. We have. Okay. So we're on to much consideration. That takes us to flooding issues in and around the village. Um. Oh, it's wet and it's 
So we, um, no, we, we've, had a, we've had a number of um, attempts to go out and clear drains, grids. David's done quite a lot of other stuff. Um, we, had, we had a bash on the one up the top of Hill Lane. But that still yeah. needs that gap, doesn't it? <coughs> I mean, we've got, we've, we've cleared a lot of it, but it still needs to be, be clear out. We've had a couple of goes on it. Mm. I think, uh, I think the other thing, Amanda and David, is um, at the top of the second kissing gate, where it's flowing down from the knoll, um, it, it flows. Um, it's flowing into the wooded area, flowing down uh, the field, and then when it gets to the bottom kissing gate, it's either flowing down towards Nile. Uh, oh, behind the church. Yeah, behind yeah. the church, or it's flowing down that footpath, which has been gouged up. Are there any ways in which we can <coughs> get some pipe work in there to Dave, actually... Yeah, David's had the got some quotes. Right. Um, as you know, we've so we've had Kenny uh, clear behind the church uh, along the footpath yeah. and he's now given us a price um, but I said to Bob and me and Bob are going to meet him up there but he's got a price to take that water from where you say yeah. um, from the field and the kissing gate yeah. and take it along the path and drop it down but not at too high a flow rate into the drain in Cedar Close Okay. Um, but we've Got to finalise, but he has given me a quote. Do you want me to? Yeah, so is it, it going to? So, David, is he going to pipe it? Or no, it? he's going to. Uh, the quote, the quote for proposed work on footpath behind St Michael's Church: excavation of a new ditch on the upper side of the footpath. This will catch the water from the field yeah. and the kissing gate. Um, some pipe to be installed in certain areas. This is because. Basically, he's pricing for it because in places there's, there'll be tree roots and it'll need to cross under the path right. um, in certain areas. Uh, at the kissing gate, at the top of the path, and on the downward slope to the church, this is the pipe. And then after that, he's going to resurface the footpath with ceram and then stone on top to make it back to how it once was many years ago. And that's £6,400. Which is quite good considering the amount of work, and it, and it will solve the kissing gate, the, the second kissing gate, where you say where the water's yeah. carrying on down, it yeah. will turn that water, yeah. but in a period of really high flow, it will let it go back across the field as it has, but at a much reduced rate. So you're not flooding everything. Which, which field, the one where the sheep are? Yeah, or the... yeah. But they'll, no, not. The one behind the church, the one where the kissing gate is man. Yes, so, so the, the, the knoll path comes down. Yeah. And, and back, back kissing gate. That bottom kissing yeah. gate. So are you putting the water on it'll that go, field? In or, in, or, a, or, in or, an or, extreme rainfall event. Okay. So it, that it will go priority. All the water will go down. Okay. The new ditch. That sounds great. Yeah. So, yeah. But Kenny will meet. So in fact, we've got to meet with Kenny to yeah. look at the detail of that. We've also <coughs> organised, or we're trying to get a date from um, the internal drainage board as well to come out and have a look at the other issues relating to the the drains getting blocked in the ditch that's coming down Hill Lane, uh, and the other things that they need to be taking an interest yeah. in. It's, it's, it's both science problems. Yeah. 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 It is both yeah. science. I mean, we've we've also reported to highways the the block gullies that are in the in the highway, so the yeah. up by Alcott's Hall and the ones down at the junction of Hill Lane and yeah. Church Lane. Colin and then Andy. Um, no, uh, um, one of the problems is when it runs off down by Hill, um, by Diamond's Farm, yeah. it comes round on the road and then disappears down, if you like, a yeah. culvert into Whereas, could we not I think cut Tony, Tony Hill was paid to have that done. Okay, cut her and he's, then cut, recut the things. Yeah. 
re recut the valleys it didn't go down. Yeah, because apparently <laughs> talking to I, I did speak to highways and yeah. they won't cut those gutters anymore. That's not really in their remit. Right. They they would once upon a time like they clean the grate out at the bottom of Cops Cottage, but they then have the opinion that it it's yeah. not really their thing to do because it's on private property. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Okay. And I think again we're gonna yeah, have discussions good. with other landowners as well to yeah. make sure that they're contributing to this. Okay. Andy. Yeah, I was just gonna on that, that point, um, yeah. we know towards the council and various bodies are now under pressure. We're going to get more and more of this, so it's not our responsibility. Um, it's okay if Tony pays for the cutting in this time round, but in two to five years' time, we're going to have to do it again. So I think we need to be looking at this council taking some sort of contract out somewhere along the line to maintain and keep this, because I can't see it's it's taken you got quite a lot of effort to get people to come out and see us and. Um, I think that's only going to get worse, isn't it? It's not going to get easier. Um, so we, I think we need to be looking at some form of uh, structured contract with a contractor to do some of this work for us, including clearing the hedges, because we can't keep asking councillors in their spare time to clear, clear hedges out of the ditches. So I think, you know, that's, I don't know if we put that on for the next agenda, or we ask the, the team to have a look at it and come in with some costs. Even if we don't do it now, Bob Chairman, um, I think we, it's something we've got to consider going forward. Birmingham Council has just announced 300 million worth of cuts. I don't think Taunton is going to be quite that high, but they are going to come back with something significant, aren't they? And if we don't arm ourselves, we're going to get caught. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, I think you're right. I, mean, I think it is something we are going to have to take on an element of. But equally, we've got to make sure that landowners contribute where they need to be contributing as well, because we can't. We can't abrogate them of their responsibilities. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Colin. Does do David and you therefore need uh, uh, recommendations that you pursue this now with Kenny Gordon uh, to actually spend this money, or are you going to come back to us when it's finalised? What, what, how, where, well, how do you want to put I, I personally like authorisation to spend the money, but Bob might think different. <laughs> my, my only, I think my only issue at the moment would be I think we need to clarify with him exactly what it is yeah. and whether what he's proposing is, yeah. is yeah. acceptable. That's a great question. Do you know if that Cedar Place drain can cope? Yeah, we, we... it can because it's not going to come at it fast like it has done in its extreme flow mm -hmm. at the moment. It, it's another one we've reported to highways because yeah. currently it won't go yeah. because it's completely blocked because yeah. the gravel that being blasted yeah. out of the footpath as they are filling the drain. But at least they've got that on their list as a, to come out to too. Well, I, 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 I think that, yeah. um, then I think we should um, give David and yourself, uh, if you like, approval to process this, clarify his work, um, clarify the things, and then wait for the next meeting yeah. and we can find time to go ahead. Just we'll have yeah. Or Mandy, what? No, yeah, no, it, it, yeah, no, I'm happy with that. I was just going to say one more thing. David and I were going to say, can we get some stuff, some signs? And a couple we've already, of the signs are all for that. Yeah, the signs are, but there was, apart from the signs, the ditching forks. Oh, yeah, we, yeah, we, we, yeah, would, yeah. we were like, discussing the other night the things that we could do with, apart from the signs, so that if we, in an emergency, because we obviously go out clear at weekends quite often with big rakes and whatever we can. I was like, I used a margarine tub to clear out the drain outside your house the other day. We had an old margarine tub. I think it would be useful then. I mean, in terms of the sign, <coughs> that should be underway anyway. Yeah. The rest of it, if the flood action group, which in the fact you two, to yeah. start with anyway, with Colin, yeah. Yeah. can draw up the list of the, yeah. of the equipment the, we need. The signs are 165. I've got a little list, but yeah. But that's a comprehensive thing. Blue pizza. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> here's one I prepared earlier. I did do a little list. Well, we've got the <coughs> prices as well. Okay, well, we'll, 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 that's fine. Yeah, we'll put that on the next. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. If, if you get a list like that in the future, if you want to put it on the agenda, yeah. when the, then we can make sure it gets dealt with. Oh yeah, no, that's okay. I just thought it could come under flooding. Yeah. Sorry. Put it on the open meeting. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just yeah. On the 
the point that um, yeah, if we're going to wait four more weeks to make a, a final decision on that flight defence at the top, I think it would be worth giving yourself and David the permission to say yes or no, rather than bringing it back in four weeks, because we're due for more rain again, aren't we? Um, yes, that's uh, true. And uh, this, this is now getting to a point where I think uh, Niles has been flooded twice. Yeah. Um, if we're not careful, we're going to land up with the graveyard down in people's gardens, because if you look at the wall at the back there, that's starting to leak all over the place. Mm -hmm. If we don't get it sorted, we're going to have a bigger bill, is what I'm trying to say, badly. I mean, ultimately, if members want to give us that authority, that's fine. All I will say is that's, that's, that's going to be a substantial lump of, of, of your budget, so as long as you're happy that that's been given to... I don't think we have a choice, from my perspective. Okay. I think yeah, I think that's probably the worst um, area, yeah. Bob. Yeah. Uh, yes. If if you look at Hill Lane, it's cope. Hill Lane's really cope with it well, um, and especially when David and, and the gang got together to clean all the weed out, um, it everything went down bodies, which was fantastic. Yeah. Um, but it's it's the back of the. If you walk up the back. Uh, which which I did, that it was just pouring down and just going down anywhere. Um, and if, if Kenny can yeah. redirect it, or David and you can, uh, with Amanda, get it redirected, I think that would really help matters. Yeah. Yeah. Can I also ask then if, if, if you would be in agreement that we also speak to potentially the landowners along there? Because I know one or two of them have already made the approach to say they would be prepared to contribute. Oh, so yeah. if they're prepared. Yeah. To help us with the funding, yeah. if we can make those conversations yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 presumably yes. you'll do Hill Lane and this at the same time, hopefully, i.e., with Tony. Yeah, yeah. Probably. yeah. Okay. All right, so that's your proposal? Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So all those in favour of Colin's proposal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That moves us on to item B, toilet block build project. Um, item 1, legal matters, Owen. Well, funny enough, I had a, an email late this evening actually from uh, our solicitor. Um, he, he's had some difficulty um, trying to tie um, Adam Burroughs down, who's a solicitor for their shop. Um, he's been in touch with them three times a day, and apparently Adam has not been there all day. <coughs> he promised to bring him back, and he hasn't. Um, so he, he was hoping to be able to come back to me this evening for this meeting with at least some sort of draft document. Uh, he, they, he submitted forward the 11 points that we put forward on the 21st of February as the basis of setting up uh, a, a legally agreed lease. And he's put that to Clark Woman. He's waiting for Clark Woman to come back now and agree that they're happy with that before he sends anything to us. Because he feels as though he ought to get their clearance before he sends anything to us because if there's a lot of changes, then the whole document is not really worth the paper for written on. Could, could we not just have a meeting? Because we seem to be exchanging emails and chasing each other and getting nowhere. Whereas when we started this process, there was a, there was a meeting between representatives of this council mm. and the shop, which was... Anyway, Colin. Um, can we just have some clarity on what you mean by legal matters? Because at the last meeting, we signed a, if you like, certainly wasn't a legal document, there was sort of a letter of intent for them to a better <coughs> between us and the parish council. What legal matters are we now trying to sort out? We're trying to, we're trying to draw up a, a, a lease, an, an official formal lease. Um, well, it, it, that, and he's trying to incorporate those items that we have identified within that lease that the shop have obviously um, uh, been party to as well. So that's what we're trying to get to basically, with some difficulty. Um, um, okay. Um, I'm getting rather um, frustrated as a councillor, and I think some of us are getting rather frustrated. Um, um, the frustration is coming from the, the discussions we had last week, whereby it was very clear that uh, the Parish Council were going to uh, if you like, put their 
budget uh, in complete, um, um, well, it was going to be cut to the bone, effectively, our budget um, in funding this shop. Um, uh, and it, it caused me to have a bit of concern. Uh, it was pointed out to us by a member of the public that the letter of intent had no legal um, standing. It was merely an agreement between Powell's, or so say Powell's, which really isn't substantial for a parish council undertaking a project of this nature. Um, and it caused me also to, um, or some of us, to have concerns about the initial criteria that the Parish Council agreed some time ago uh, as to what must be agreed before we actually went forward with this um, building. One of them was the statutory of state approval for a loan, which we've got. Um, the satisfactory outcome from the resolution of the existing shop future, which we know is now closed. Uh, the design and build costs are within the budget set by the Parish Council. Well, hopefully Owen will um, detail those to us now. Four, a substantial and viable business plan for the short and medium term, together with an up-to-date set of accounts, demonstrating the shop's ability to meet the running costs and the costs of setting up and fitting out the new premises. And fi uh, finally, the management committee of the shop undertake to enter a full repairing lease in accordance with the current position of such an undertaking. Those five points were agreed by the Parish Council as they must be in place if this was going to go forward. Now, um, concern has also been um, discussed, and I hope uh, councillors would also um, support me on this, is that um, I think the Parish Council, if we're, a pro uh, we're carrying out a project that's going to cost us, at the end of the day, 250000 counting the costs we've had at the moment. Um, I would like to see some assurance from the shop that, um, one, they've got the money, but uh, notwithstanding that, I would like that money to be deposited with a lawyer, with their lawyer or our lawyers, so that we know we've got um, guarantees that that money is going to be paid. I look at the shop accounts for last year and I note that their cash position at the end of uh, January 2023 um, was £34,660. The cash position at 22 was 17000 and they had received grants of 16000 but their profits that they've made, they've sunk into fixed assets of the shop. In other words, they haven't built up any uh, much of a cash reserve the last year. They've spent it all on fixed assets and things that should have been probably put aside ready for the um, build costs that are going to go forward. So I am a bit concerned, um, especially the comments that were made last time, when they say they've got to go out and raise 60 odd thousand, I know they won't do it because they've only got seven thousand pounds of shareholders' funds. So I don't know where their money is going to come from, but all I know is as a councillor, I want some security uh, that they are going to pay this money, and I would like to see that put in a separate account. It won't um, uh, make them suffer at all because one, they've got sufficient working capital, or will have, and two, they're going to have to save that money anyway, because it's, it's our money. So I would like to ask, really, and moving on to financial considerations, for Owen to show us the budget, because we have to be mindful that this is going to be a very tight budget, very tight construction. And 
I want to know if it is overrun, where's that money going to come from? It can't come out of our <coughs> existing budget because that will make us unable to do anything at all in this parish council, particularly the things we're talking about now. Um, and so I will fight that our budget stays as it is. Um, and if there's any over-expenditure, where's it going to come from? If it's going to come out of reserves, I don't think it should come out of reserves. It's got to be found from somewhere. So, I'm sorry, but that's my uh, position. I think a lot of us have expressed concern about it. Bear in mind also that Owen is going to have to pay all these sums out. Um, he's going to have to work out a precise cash budget. We've got to be careful that we don't have any um, major um, uh, revisions and additions to the contract, because if we do, we will be well over things. So I think, there's, I think we all need to just stand back a moment and just make sure we are happy with what we're doing. I'm sorry, Bob, but that's been expressed by members to me. I'm being a mouthpiece. Now I'll be quiet and hopefully someone else will um, support or object to what I've said. Okay. Just, I think, before we, we move forward with making any, any changes, we would need to address the positions, and I know you've been council has been made aware of it, the, the position potentially with our standing orders. Um, we have a standing orders which say that we should not be reopening matters within six months, let alone three weeks, of what being decided at a meeting. Um, there is a standing order, I'm led to believe by the clerk, that enables us to suspend that standing order. Um, but I think that is something we would have to do if we are to change the terms on which we have um, entered into the agreement that we did with the with the shop. In terms of the items that you, you've queried as to whether they actually have met the conditions that we originally set down, I would just refer you back to our minutes of the 5th of January 2022, when the issue was raised of the community, and I'll read it to be clear, the community shop management group made a presentation to the council regarding its financial viability and to take questions from the council for clarity on the plan previously circulated. The presentation was a joint exercise between the shop chairman, the accountant, the volunteer support person and the purchasing volunteer. A number of relevant questions were put from the council. A debate followed by the council to consider its position currently and going forward into the future, and specifically the progression of a new bill to replace the porter cabin that exists currently for a period of up to two years. Resolution 1 was to agree the viability plan as being an acceptable document to fulfil conditions 4 and condition 5 set back in July. This resolution was approved by a majority vote of five in support and three against. And it was on that basis that we then continued to proceed um, because we had, as a council, resolved at that point that those conditions had been met and therefore we continued with the process. At the last meeting, as I say, held some two weeks ago approximately, um, there was a long discussion about the pre-meeting, uh, about the pre-agreement um, that in effect we looked at. Um, you mentioned that a member of the public has written in raising some, some issues about it, its legal um, position. Um, we did at that meeting make it very clear that it was not a legally binding agreement. Um, and if you watch the video back, you will, you will see that. Um, we explained a great deal that it was a document that expressed the goodwill and the commitment of both sides in public for, for us to proceed. Um, it was, again, queries have been raised about the terms within the agreements as to whether they are legally binding. And what we said was that the whole point of that document was it set the framework for us to draw up the legally binding lease, which is the document that Owen was, was just referring to. And both parties, following that long discussion, um, signed the document. Um, I was instructed to do so by this council and made it clear to at least one member of this council that if they weren't happy with that document, then there was they should take the action that, that they felt was appropriate. At that meeting, all members who were present bar one, uh, who is not with us this evening, voted in support of us going ahead on that basis. We then subsequently voted to go ahead with the loan, 
and voted to go ahead with the provision for the Jace, uh, the, the contract with the contractor to go ahead and let the contract go forward. In terms of our budget, it has not changed from where we were before. We set, in fact, two weeks prior to that meeting, we agreed the £222,000 budget that we were agreeing to, subject only to the signing off of a document to agree how we progress. Um, and so I don't see that we can simply unwind those without councillors having to make the decision if they wish to revisit and, and add additional conditions to those, then I think they just need to follow the correct procedures in terms of doing that, realise that this is not a small decision to make in terms of overturning standing orders lightly, and equally it's not a small decision in terms of the working relationship between this council and the shop in terms of our relationship going forward um, and the delivery of this project because the danger is we know we're working to a timetable um, we know that we have a contractor in place and if we are not careful we could jeopardize the entire project um, potentially on, on this ultimately as I've always said to this council it's for members to make their individual decisions um, and the council will go along with what members decide um, but I think it's only fair that members go into that with their eyes wide open Andy um, I think bringing the point up uh, about the standing uh, order um, is valid. I have no problem with that. The issue is that the councillors are understanding that there is going to be a payment and contribution of 21,000 and the budget, our budget, has it built in at 26,000 because of the solar panels on the roof. The roof, um, and therefore there is a, there the, the council uh, the resolution stands that we say yes, as long as that's, been, that's part of the payment. What the council is now asking, uh, or members are asking, is how are they going to pay that and have they got the funds and does it knock them into a difficult trading position, which is also negative to the project. I think also using um, the pressure of we've got contracts and, and stuff is a little bit unfair. Yes, we're getting there, but we're also relying on the fact that uh, I don't think if we put a vote round, if councillors really fully understood that they're committing £48,000 of their budget, and this is at a time when we've been warned that we've got a, a, a county council which is about to go bankrupt. Birmingham has just put £300 million worth of projects back out, uh, which they've cancelled. Uh, our council, we know from numbers, we're talking about hundreds of millions, so somehow all the services are going to be uh, pushed back onto us and we're going to be cutting back our budget. Our, our answer in response to that last time was, that's okay, we'll put the precept up again. And we put the precept up 16% this time. So I think what councillors are really talking about and concerned about is, we're tight on our budget, there is nothing left. We, you, you're saying in, the, in our um, budgeting process we've got 14,000 pounds left, which takes us into two, two months of our expenditure. We've already agreed that we're going to spend £7,000 of that on flood defences. We've already agreed in this meeting today that we can, re we can rely on the fact that we're going to see less and less services here and we're going to have to fund them from the parish council. £14,000 is not very much. We've got the rest of the year to go with. Secondly, on that, councillors didn't realise that the, the, the level of the £48,000, but that's not just where we're standing. We're, we've got to guarantee that £26,000 or else this business case does not run. If we don't guarantee that 26,000, we cannot fund, we've only got 14,000, we cannot fund it unless we cut back on the other services that we've got in our budget. So if they don't pay it, the project doesn't fly. That's what the council is concerned about and their ability to pay it. If they do pay it as a shop, and we all want the shop, nobody's against the shop, but there's no point us being in a position where the council is bankrupt or to the point where it's got a shop and it can't do the other activities that we're trying to do for the rest of the village. We're here to work for the whole village, not just part of the village. So the two points is, is I think it's unfair to raise the, it's right to raise the standing order. It is, um, it is by the shop not giving us a guarantee to pay right in any legal sense for us to stand against that standing order because it's in the budget, it says it's going to be paid, and that's what the council has signed up to. And the second piece on that is that um, we've got no backup at all if we get an overrun. 
Now, at the moment, the industry is seeing somewhere in the region of 10 to 12 percent because of the Red Sea. The quote might be able to, from our, um, our company, might be able to cover that, or that might be their profit. We don't know where they stand on that. What we do know is we've got no reserve for any overruns. If we have to stand on the 26, we'll have no money left as a parish council. If we then have an overrun, we can't finish the project. Those are not, are hopefully, two um, situations that won't occur. But surely as a council and a fiscal uh, situation, we should be mitigating those circumstances before we run this council into that position. If we can't mitigate, we shouldn't be going forward with it. And one of those is, can the shop sign in, uh, give us a confirmation of the, of the £26,000 in the period? That is not going against the standing order block, surely. Well, my, my own view would be, yes it is, because in effect what we did was we, we, we passed a, a resolution to sign that agreement on the terms that were in that agreement. We had a long discussion around it, and I know you raised at that meeting a number of issues, but ultimately, members voted for it. You, you've said today that members didn't appreciate the use of the reserves. They did at that point, because you pointed it out at that last meeting in no uncertain terms. So at that meeting, members went in to, or to, to in effect, instructing me to sign that agreement in the full knowledge of the Somerset budget of our tightness of budget, and we did discuss the fact that our budget would be tight for next year if, if that happened. So I believe that members should have been well aware at that meeting as okay. to what they... The, the, the phrase should, no, hold, the phrase hold, should. Hold on, hold on, Andy. You've had a, a say, and I just need to answer some of your points. Members voted at that meeting you, with only one member, who is someone who has not supported the project all the way through, voting the other way. They had the choice at that point not to sign up to that agreement. To now say that we want to change the terms of that agreement is going back on what we did at that meeting. Members can ultimately make that decision, but it is not just simply adding an extra clause. This is fundamentally changing what we asked for. We had at that meeting reassurance, both from the chairman and then a subsequent intervention from another member of the committee, who pointed out that they do have funds in terms of they could pay the, the section 14, they could open the shop without having major rude fundraising, but they would have to do it on the basis of it would be a basic offer rather than a, a more plush offer, which they said they would do if they raised the extra money. <coughs> so they publicly signed at that meeting as well their commitment to cover the 21,000 and to do the solar panels. They're not, they are both mentioned in that agreement that that's part of what they're responsible for. So they have signed up to that in public as well. Like us, they're also residents of this village, and if, if the shop suddenly turned round and didn't fulfil their responsibilities that they've signed up to in public, they're going to get as much grief as anybody else is, because they would have been going back on what they've signed up to in public as well. It was explained as a document which was not going to be legally binding, but it was very much that intention of what we all wish to move ahead with. And I do think it is fair to, to highlight the issue with the contractor, because we do know that we have a, a distinct time limit that we have to operate within. And if we miss the opportunity at this point, as I think it was, it was Colin at the last meeting said, if we don't go ahead with it now, we come back to it another 12 months, it's going to be another 10% higher anyway. So I do think there is that pressure of time. And if you think, having had the effort that we did to get a legally binding agreement between two sets of solicitors originally, if you think we can get something agreed and tied up between now and the deadline as to when we need to go ahead with the contractor, I'm, I honestly don't believe that will happen. I think if we change the deal now, I do think we run the real risk of this whole thing just unravelling. That's okay. a choice let's, that let's, make. let's talk about the whole thing unravelling. The whole thing unravelling means that we, we lose on the, on the original contractor, so, you, so we have to go back to tender. That doesn't affect the shop. The shop still operates and still functions perfectly well now. All we're doing is talking about giving them better premises and tidying up our toilets. We can tidy up the toilets for a lot less money than 250000 My concern, and other councillors' concerns, is the fact, and when you say, I think you've been again a little discourteous, yes, they, they, we had a conversation about we're using a lot of the budget. The comments came back from individuals, and uh, well, from individuals, 
around that of they didn't really realise and don't un and didn't understand the impact that we're going to be talking about here. So of our £14,000, £7,000 is already spent. We've got the rest of the year, we've got £7,000 left, unless we cut back on our other resources. That's the impact of us doing this. If the, if, and um, the, the bit about they live in the village, you've, as councillors, we're all aware, and most of us have been approached on this subject or other subjects about doing it or not doing it. Let's look at this in a more sensible way. They are an unlimited company. If they don't pay the bill, if they, they fail to pay the bill, and God forbid that they do, because we all want the shop, then there is no legal comeback on them at all. A piece of paper that we've written here at the council has no impact on them at all. As councillors, it has an impact on us because we are bound by certain rules, but we are volunteers. What we're asking the people here to do today and over the last few days is sign up to something that could potentially, with no mitigation, and I'm not saying don't do it, I'm saying where's the mitigation? If this does happen, and it could happen, how do we mitigate? And if we haven't got a mitigation, then I think we've got to think about well, how we're going to go ahead about this. And if it means that we've got to postpone the contract, then we postpone the contract. If they want the business, because the business is hard out there and the, the building sector is in a really bad way, yes, it might be 10 cent, it might even be cheaper. But at the moment, their prices are going up. Those prices will be passed on to us one way or another in this build anyway. Where's that in the budget? So. My concern is we leave this by taking up this at this early stage without that guarantee of that, that uh, or the risk of that 26,000 puts another risk into this council. And we're already carrying a lot of risk on this. And why is it that the councillors are taking so much pressure on this when the shop people or the people that are supposed to be building this are taking very little uh, issue on this? So, from my perspective and from others, that is the concern. That there is no legal obligation, there is no, there is no proof, apart from two people standing up saying, oh yeah, we can pay it. Now, if their numbers are right, and I've seen, uh, and they've got the 26,000, I understand that's a very large part of their cash. If they you remove all of their cash into us, how are they going to operate? Because they can't pay the bills. Can we see that they're going to pay the bills? Or are we going to get something that comes back and says we're going to have to pay it in four, five, six, seven stages? and can they guarantee those stages. However we do this, we need to ensure that we mitigate the risk. And I'm not against the shop. I am against the way that we are putting the council at risk. Go on. Um, thanks, Bob. Um, yeah, I, I support Andy. Um, I, um, I think we've had an opportunity probably to uh, sit back um, I, I can't for the life of me think while Owen has reported on what we're doing on legal matters um, because one of our, our fifth one says the shops undertake to enter a full repairing lease in accordance with the current position of the undertaking. There's, you know, we've been messing about with the shop and their lawyers for 12 months and we've got nowhere. Um, we should be giving the lease it's us, we're the landlord, we should give them a lease and they should sign it um, and have done with it. I, I don't know why we're procrastinating about it, to be honest with you. But what I would like, Owen, you now is to show us, please, the design and build costs are within the budget set by the Parish Council. Uh, I think I'd like to yeah. see those and I'd like us all to see those. Um, because it's... This also is very important. It's just as important as having that security of funds from the shop. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Uh, on the screen, you'll see there that there's, there's two lots of expenditure. There's the expenditure of all Ran, ran, let me just tell you. You managed to hide the titles. Yeah. 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 The screen across a bit. Uh, your computer. Oh, across. sorry, not please. That's trouble sitting your back to me or something, isn't it? Let's turn around and see what I'm doing then. That'll be the first time I've done that. Right, okay, let's come across here. Uh, see if we can move it across. No, it's the, it's the projector. It's the projector. Can you 
made it not maximise your screen slightly reduce them because you've got all this white space over here and then you can slide it over there. No, no. If you go up in the top right corner and, yeah. and don't, you know you can mi go into minimize. Yeah. not minimise it, but do the one next to it, the one oh, that's right. changed. Okay, that right. Okay. Now drag it over a bit, yeah. Is that the back? And you can yeah. pull that down. Okay, right. Pull that down. Well, there's, there's the header anyway. Toy Building shall build. Um, expenditure to 31st of December 2023. So those are the items that we have already effectively paid for. So there's Paul planning fees, Paul Martin's initial uh, fees, um, architectural fees, BAT survey, SBM calculations, structural design, printing for tenders, flyers for survey, legal deposit to Holly and Steer, valuation fees, removal of apple tree, and use quest advertising. Now that all comes to a total of 12,000 559 and that is money that has actually been now expended, expended. Okay. Now we move forward to the uh, January the 1st from January the 1st and this is the, uh, the forecast. Now the forecast cost of the bill as we know is 222,000. The VAT in addition to that, because this is a VAT, just remember that 222 is plus VAT. We put the VAT in there just so when we come to do a cash flow, that will need to show up in the cash flow. Um, but it's not included in my totals at the bottom. Um, project management, this is the fee that Paul Martin is going to be charging to manage the build. And this is Paul's latest figures. In other words, these are the latest figures we have from Paul. And also includes some of the meetings he's already attended. Um, of 11,500. We've had VAT financial advice, 750 plus is a 150 VAT, which again is not been included. The legal fees from Holland and Steer are likely to be in the order of 3,500. Building rate fees, £1,000. Toilet hire for 26 weeks, 650. And we have a contingency fund of 350. Now, totals of that excluding VAT comes to 239,400. And when we move down again, where's their income coming from? Where's the cost of the money to actually build the project? We have silver funds of 36,778. We will have a PWLB loan facility of 160,000. Um, we have 2023-24, which is the current year, where we set aside 11,203 for payments that we never had to make because we didn't borrow the money. So that was set in a reserve. So that's available to us. Um, the shop reclaim on the bill completion, section 14, otherwise known as 26,000, includes the 5,000 PC sum for the solar panels. Because at the end of the day, that's the money that the shop will need to pay the builder when he invoices the shop. That's the amount he'll be invoicing the shop for. How can the builder invoice the shop when we are placing a contract in the sum of £220,000, which includes Section 14? He has, no, he has no contract with the shop. We have total responsibility for do Section 14 costs. He has agreed to do it. Well, then the shop has to enter into a contract with the builder for £26,000. We cannot place a contract in the sum of £220,000 with the builder because that includes Section 14 costs. And if he's going to build the shop, that's his contract with the shop, not us. How many times do I have to explain the legal the legal implications of what you are doing. I don't think you have a clue what you're doing, to be honest with you. I think you're out of your depth. Totally. I have to say it, I'm sorry. And that's your view, Colin, that's fine. Well, it, it is, but okay. you, how can you say, Owen, that the builder has agreed when you're placing a contract in the sum of £220,000 with the builder. Because there was no other way of doing it. Then, of course, then, then you cannot, then 
the shop cannot build the builder for it. it it's bonkers. Because the, 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 the other thing to say, Colin, of course, is by, by invoicing the shop for that part of the build, that will also include the VAT element of that build, which the shop can then deal with separately. If they invoiced us for it, the VAT would be a problem. Then, this is a trouble. Then you have to have two contracts. I'd say it again. One contract for 220000 less 26000 which is between us and the builder, and then the shop have to have a contract with the builder for his £26,000. It's as simple well, as that. The thing is, Colin... And you, then it takes all that responsibility away from us. It does, but the thing you've got to remember, Colin, is we've been taking advice from Paul Martin. Uh, now, Paul, Paul has done lots of these projects, and he has... No, no you saying that we have no, no, no experience? No, no, but he's advising, he's advising us that, we, can, that we, we are enabled to do that. We can do it if the builder agrees to it. But you know, look at the end of the day. I'm you, you. You know, don't don't look at me as an expert on building because I'm not. No building in my life. I'm just dealing with figures that are presented to me, and trying to do the best I can to try and get this project over the line. I do agree with you. Twenty-six thousand pounds is an anomaly. It, it's, it's a difficult, it's a difficult sum. But I'm not sure what else we can do. I mean, as Owen said, the advice we've had from from Paul, from the VAT expert that we asked for his information on the terms of how the VAT could be dealt with and the discussion with Bill have all said they are prepared to work in that way. Now, that's the well, advice we've had, that's there, all we can put there, in front there, of the There's the answer that's come up right at the bottom. Okay. There is your answer. Have, have the okay. We haven't put a spade in the ground. Is it, is it worth asking the builder if he would, if he would go and do that and just separate it out, just for the sake of is it, is it worth asking him if he were to do that and separate the two? Well, that's what he has agreed to do. But, so, so he, so his, yes, I know he said he would invoice them, but ultimately we would be liable if, what Colin and Andy were suggesting, if there was a problem, we would be liable for that figure, would we? Or would he just say, no, that's fine, the shop are liable? I think that's what we're trying to separate out here. Our contract, if, if I can explain it once yeah, again, yeah, no, I, I just our contract you. with the builder should be for two hundred and twenty thousand less twenty six thousand pounds. Okay, that would be our obligation. Yes, yeah, so I'm just wondering if that's a possibility now, or if it's not. Because if that is the case, Amanda, then we have no obligation yes, for I the costs associated yes. with the shop. I was just wondering if he'd been asked if that was possible. He, he hasn't been asked that yeah. because this issue hasn't been raised yeah. at any of the meetings that we as a council have held for the I, last two I, years. I, I, I it hasn't been that. raised at the building regulation meetings that we've had at the building group. Sort of it is suddenly thrown in at the last minute at this stage when, again, as I say, if we are going to have further discussion on this and potentially a vote on this, I think we need to decide, first of all, whether we are looking to suspend those standing orders that, that are being proposed. Because until we, it, it, unless we do that, we can't actually change the decision we've made anyway. Well, well Andy. Just, just to point out um, for all of us to see, um, the red line at the bottom, I read that. So at the moment, we're already £3,000 over that. Well, and and yeah. where so, is it coming from? Where is so, that money so we're coming gonna, from? We'll have to cut back on other resources, even if the 26 grand isn't a problem. Mm -hmm. have to Technically, no, because out. within the 222, there is a contingency sum built into that by the builder anyway, by the architect. Of how much? I think he said it was circa six, 7,000, that sort of approach. What it's not a, it's not a, it's not a huge sum of contingency, but it is there is a small contingency in there. A contingency against any potential variations that might come up. Okay. Can I just ask one thing? When you go back up to the um, the project managing fee, I understood that we'd been quoted eight thousand mm. for the project management. There's a, there's we, a simple we, solution to that. A simple I mean, answer to that. Basically what happened was when Paul gave us a quote we were looking at a number of tenders, and most of the others, or the other three, certainly, were on a shorter time scale. In other words, they were only sort of 16 weeks, and he based his 
his fee on the fact that he needs need to be on site for 16 weeks. When we looked at the Ashley Baker uh, contract, 